In this video, I'll show how to implement two ventilation groups using the WCC310 Control Panel Plus version. For this installation, you need the WCC310 Control Panel Plus version two actuators representing the two ventilation groups and two WSK-103 manual override switches. Here I have the WCC-310 Plus control panel. Let's have a look inside. Inside, we see the installation manual and the panel itself. I open the panel, any screwdriver can be used to open it, Inside, we notice the cabled land included. We'll use it later in our installation. I can now start the installation of the peripherals. I'll first connect the two actuators. The first actuator is going to be connected to S1 motor line 1. I connect the cable cores in this order white in Terminal 1, green in Terminal 2, and brown in Terminal 3. I'll connect the second actuator to S2X1. I connect the cable cores in the same order, white, green, and brown. The WSK-103 manual override switch. Inside, we find the installation manual, the cable, and the switch itself. The next step is to connect three manual override switches. Two will be connected to each of the two motor lines we have installed, and the third will function as a thermostat that controls the two motor lines in automatic mode. I connect the first manual override switch for motor line one, to S1X3. First, the open signal, second, the closed signal, and lastly, the common. The second manual override switch for the actuator connected to S2X1. I'll connect it to S3X1 in the same order. The open signal, the closed signal, and the common. Now I connect the third manual override switch that represents the automatic control. I'll connect it to S3X6, which is the input for common control. The cable cores are connected in the same order. Open, close and common. The installation is completed. I'm now connecting the panel to the mains power. I remove the black plastic cover here. Here I have the terminal for connecting the power and the earth connection here. First I connect the earth to the screw here and two cable cores into these terminals, zero and phase. When done, I place back the protection cover. Next, I power the panel. Now I'm ready to start the configuration. In order to make the configuration, we'll be using the display. The first thing to do is to log on to the panel with level three. I press the key button and insert the default pin code four, three, two, one. I enter the configuration menu. I start with the configuration of the actuators. I press the motor line button. The first actuator is connected to S1X1. The actuator will run in motor link mode. 
expected number of motors. I want the panel to discover the actuator, so I select Discover. We wait for the panel to detect the actuator. Now the actuator is detected, the panel found one. By default, it is associated with Motor Group 1, so I leave the setting as it is. To test that the configuration works, I press the up button on the panel and the actuator is opening. I press the down button and the actuator is closing. I go back to the motor line configuration menu. I've connected the second actuator to S2X1. It will also run in motor link mode. I let it discover the number of motors. One actuator is detected and the motor group that this actuator is associated with by default is 3. This can be changed, but I'm fine with the default. The configuration of the second actuator is done. I can test it in the same way. I press the up button and the actuator opens. And the down button and the actuator is closing. Everything is working as expected. Next, I'll configure the manual override switch connected at S3X6 that will control the two actuators I've installed in an automatic command. In the configuration menu, I select local input and S3X6, one for the open terminal. I select the correct motor groups that are being controlled by this peripheral, 1 and 3. The active function I want in this case is automatic open, so I select it. The short output function I want to have is automatic stop. For the closed terminal, I select S3, X6, 2. I select again the correct motor groups, 1 and 3. The active function is automatic close. And the short function is automatic stop. Now I can test. I'm pressing the open button and the actuators are running in automatic speed, which is lower than the manual command speed. I stop with a short push on any of the buttons. I long press the close button and the actuators are closing. This is working according to my configuration. Next, I'll configure the manual override switch that controls the motor group 1 and is connected at S1X3. I select S1X3-1 for the open command. I see it's associated to motor group 1, which is what I need in this installation. The default active function is open, which is also what I need. The short output function is stop. The default configuration works fine for my installation. S1X32. We see that the motor groups associated with this are motor group 1 active function close and the short output function is stop. Also in this case the default is correct. I test the configuration, press the open button, and the motor line one actuator starts running. Short press 
to stop and long press on the stop button to close. It works as configured. The last hardware to configure is the manual override switch connected to the S3X1. I select S3X11. We see that it's associated with motor group 3. The active function is open and the short output function is stop. The default setting is what I need it to be. Terminal S3X12. Here we have motor group 3, active function close and the short output function stop. This configuration is also correct. Let's test it. I press the open button and the second actuator is opening. Short press to stop and long press to the close button to close. Please notice that if I try the automatic command now, I press the open and nothing happens. The reason for this is that the automatic command has lower priority than manual command. After 30 minutes from using the manual command, the automatic command will work again. Everything is working as expected. The control panel is ready for use.